Okay, so we're now ready to apply our uh, Euler-Lagrange equations to the solution of a system like this. So this is a very simple oscillatory system. We have a mass attached to a spring. We're going to assume a very smooth surface, so there's no friction forces, no air resistance, no air drag, nothing that is damping the oscillations. And there are no external forces driving the system. So essentially, we're just starting off at some displacement x and then we're just letting that vibrate freely so you can imagine that this would give us a um, sinusoidal kind of motion or a simple harmonic motion so the first thing i want to do is to use the newtonian method just to give you a refresher of what this looks like so the newtonian approach is as follows you draw the free body diagram so we have our mass here so we now we're going to draw all the forces acting on the system so the first thing we notice is that if this is moving to the right, so basically we're going to have the inertial force here, and mass times acceleration, this is, accounts for the total force on the system. Now what we're going to have is a restoring spring force, which is going to act opposite to this motion, and we know that it is equal to the stiffness times the displacement. And this is basically equal to mx double dot. So now what we need to do is we take the sum of the forces in the x direction equals to not zero but rather mx double dot and basically we're going to assume that everything going in this direction is going to be positive so this here is going to be equal to minus kx because the restoring force is opposite to the motion of the body and now we can simply write this as mx double dot plus kx equals to zero so we can see that it was really, really simple to do this calculation. In fact, it didn't even require two steps, one single step and we're done. So why would we need any other formulation? Well, there are certain problems that can become quite complicated to analyze using Newtonian mechanics, particularly multi-body systems. So what we're going to do instead is try to use develop a better approach that is more general and can be used for a lot of more uh, intricate situations. So now we're going to take the Lagrangian approach so Lagrangian approach and the way it works is as follows we have our Lagrangian equation which we know looks like this so we have Q which is just a generalized coordinate and then this is equal to okay and we know that the Lagrangian itself is a quantity associated with the energy, so we have kinetic energy and potential energy. So now what we need to do is we need to establish, well, we know the kinetic energy is just going to be half of mv squared, and the velocity is just the first derivative of displacement, so mx dot squared, like that. And now for v, we're going to have the following. We have the potential energy of a spring, so this is just going to be half of kx squared. Now normally we would have something like the gravitational potential energy, but we don't have any elevation here, we're just assuming that the potential with respect to this is zero. So this is what the potential energy looks like. So now what we're going to do is, we're going to uh, put this into the equation, so we're essentially just going to do this because we only have one coordinate here, then all we need to do is we just put it together and differentiate with respect to x. Uh, of course, we have x and then we have the velocity. So first of all, let's write the full Lagrangian, which is going to be half of mx dot squared minus half of kx squared. All right. So now what we're going to do is differentiate it. So the first differentiation is going to be with respect to x. So notice that velocity and position or displacement are treated as separate variables. So here we have velocity, but we're differentiating with respect to displacement, so this becomes zero. And then here we just differentiate this, so this becomes minus kx. So essentially this quantity here is just minus kx. And now for our second quantity, we need to find out what this is first. So we're going to differentiate the Lagrangian with respect to the velocity. So now we're going to treat the position as a constant, so this becomes zero. So this is going to give us the following. We're going to have mx dot. 
so this is going to be the quantity now for this we're going to take the first time derivative of this function so we're going to have d over dt of the Lagrangian here so we're going to just differentiate this so we know well the mass is constant it's not really changing with respect to time so the only thing that we have is this so we have mx double dot so now if we plug these two expressions back into the Euler Lagrange equation we're going to get the following mx double dot equals to minus kx and then this is going to give us exactly the same thing we got using Newton's method which is mx double dot plus kx equals to zero and that is pretty much it that's all we have for this system so you can see that there are two very different approaches but in the end it gives us the same result in the Newtonian mechanics method what we're doing is we're using forces or the sum of the forces to find out what the equations of motion are whereas in the Lagrangian method we always look at the energies and the Lagrangian of the system and of course we need to take derivatives and so on but you will see that this is actually quite a nice method it's very systematic very methodical and it can actually be quite useful in certain cases where Newtonian mechanics might actually be quite complicated due to vectors and, and all that. So this is really nice, generalized, very, very nice to deal with. Now obviously what does the solution to this look like? Well obviously we could write this in terms of the following. We could have x double dot minus, sorry, plus k over m x equals to zero and then you know that we can make the substitution x double dot plus omega squared x equals to zero where omega is just the square root of k over m which is often the, the natural frequency of oscillation of the system and now what we can do with this is we can well let's say we're going to have a, a characteristic equation to the second order differential equation so this is going to be omega squared equals to zero which implies that r is going to be plus or minus i omega and this implies that the solution to the system is going to be equal to some constant a times i to the omega t min plus b e to the minus i omega t and depending on, on initial conditions we can get different things for this but we can also write it in terms of cosine so a cosine omega t plus b sine omega t so we know that this is going to be some sort of simple harmonic motion because there's no energy dissipation in the system the energy is just converting from potential energy in the spring to kinetic energy of the mass and there's no kind of energy absorption or loss happening in the system so the system is just going to keep oscillating back and forth now one of the things that I wanted to point out with this video is that generally the whole purpose of classical mechanics is to derive an equation of motion so the equation of motion completely characterizes the system in question but we usually are not interested in solving it analytically and there's a really important reason for that is because for for most physical systems that we analyze this was of course extremely simple so obviously you could expect a linear differential equation like this to pop up but in general when we derive equations of motion for more complicated systems that involve more than one body we simply cannot find an analytic solution because the equations we're going to get are going to be non-linear they're going to be many of them and they're going to be coupled so in that case <coughs> we're almost always going to need to resort to numerical methods so in general once we get our equation of motion that's it that's all we need to do everything else can just be put into a computer to just kind of see what the behavior of the solution is but this is just to show you that for this particular case we could actually find an analytic solution but you don't really need to know all these rules or these general solutions or anything what you need to know understand is basically how to derive the equations of motion using the Lagrangian method and in the next video we're going to do the same kind of thing but we're going to apply it to a pendulum system